Okay, thank you, Anne. And at this time, we are going to open this up for a public hearing. And I just wanted to set a few of the ground rules for the public hearing. Uh, they are, first of all, to remain seated um, until the time for your public testimony. Uh, the second thing is not to make audible noises. This is just a simple re respect request to be um, respectful and quiet while other people are listening and speaking. Appreciate that. And also, your testimony must be germane and relevant to the legislation that is before us today. And it must be on matters relating to county government. And I have to say this because it's part of the rules, but if the rules are not followed, you may be asked to conclude your comments and asked to leave the meeting. So those are the ground rules. Having said that, now I'd like to open up the public uh, hearing. We have five people who have signed up today. And the first person is Mia Jacobson. After Mia, we will have Ivy Williams. Yes, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> so I'm here today representing Stand of America. Uh, we are a group of people of ordinary citizens who don't represent any major political interests other than the integrity of our government, the, the people's government. So I wanted to speak to all these ordinances that you guys have lumped together. Notice this is a recent decision. Usually you can have public comment towards each individual item. So if you happen to have opinions on multiple topics being addressed that day, you would have the full two minutes to give the council your ideas and your opinions, but unfortunately for some reason, which I'm sure they won't explain to me because they don't feel the need to answer questions, they've limited the opportunity that the people have to give their public testimony. We're working within a process of government that has virtually no opportunity for public comment and public participation during the creation of ordinances which monitor or um, create our society. And this is happening during a time when things are changing in our society. Things aren't going so well for us, the people, and as none of you look at me in the eye during this moment, none of you seem to be bothered or feel the need to respond to this fact that things aren't going so well for people who aren't already in government. You know, I can understand it's hard for you guys to see this because it's working out very well for you right now. You're doing business as usual. You're feeling very proud of your successes, and I can understand that. But times are changing, and in response to this change, our government needs to change. The personalities which operate in government need to respond to the trends that are happening. <laughs> And the way to bypass this calamity that we're headed towards is to open up the dialogue, get other people into the conversation, because frankly, you as individuals don't know enough. You can't know enough. This government was created for people to work together so we can solve our problems together. And in this moment, you have made more choices to limit our participation. You have gone further from the people with no explanation. I have to ask you to wrap up, Mia. Sure. So thank you very so much. So my final thought. Thank you, I'm Mia. Your time is up. up. Ivy Williams, you can step right over here to this podium. There's no reason to is Ivy Williams here? Thank you, Ivy. Go ahead. Um, we've already spoken about um, people's deaths police officers deaths but we haven't spoken about those that have died in detention and the reason the connection with the council is this is that 1.8 million dollars was spent by King County to detain and turn over to ICE suspected people that they thought were undocumented. To deny people their rights. Their rights to live. Their rights to remain in their community. Their rights to be part of their families. That is a crime. Thank you, Ivy. Could and you following please, could orders you wrap up your, your thoughts, please? is not an excuse. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I just wanted to remind you all, thank you for your testimony. It's appreciated, and we understand this issue is there. We're going to be dealing with this issue this year. 
I wanted to remind you all, though, that your comments today, one of the rules that we articulated is that it needs to relate to an issue that is on the agenda. It needs to be germane and relevant to um, the legislation that is before us. If you have a general item that you want to address the council over, that public comment would be on May 28th. And so on May 28th, we open up the microphones. People are invited to come in to talk to us about absolutely anything that they think is relevant to county government. But today, your comments need to relate to the items that are on the agenda. And that is one of the rules today. So is there any other public comment relating to the items that are on the agenda today? Yes, Dikonda Gurning. Dikonda, are your comments relevant to an agenda item today? 2013-0189. Yes, regarding uh, supplemental appropriation to adult and juvenile detention. Yes, sir. Go ahead. My name is Diakonda Gurning. I'm a mission developer of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. I'm here uh, on behalf of the Washington New Sanctuary Movement. Uh, as Ivy mentioned, uh, King County has involved in this juvenile and adult detention with the Immigration and Customs Enforcement. We are raising a children of color angry to our government. That's the price. That's the price that we are going to pay in the future. So I hope not only that we're going to have more, not just the 28th, I hope that we as a people of Martin Luther King Jr. County will say no to this policy. Thank you. Thank you. And again, the ordinance that you were speaking to is an ordinance that would approve a supplemental appropriation, um, which would cover the fiscal impacts that were not a part of the budget. Um, and that was supporting uh, salaries and wages for those individuals that work in that department. So I would appreciate it if you could keep your comments germane to the topic that is before us. And then we will have an opportunity for you to address us on these broader immigration issues, you are invited to come on the 28th to do that. So next we have Jim McMahon, followed by Jim Wong. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Jim McMahon, speaking from Who You Call an Illegal, and I also participate in um, the uh, vigil uh, every month at the Northwest Detention Center, and we're speaking on the subject of uh, detention, uh, jail detention. Uh, now, the King County Jail has maintained this jail policy uh, 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 of an ICE detainer uh, throughout the demand action. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Jim Wong. Seems like there's been some questions on how this is relevant to the issues at hand for today's discussion. And I just want to point out that ICE holes are... I'm sorry, for the record, would you mind repeating your name? That's just for the record, please. I'm J.M. Wong. Thank you. Yeah. So, do you hear my point of just there's this constant questioning of whether this issue is related to the agenda today? And I'd like to make the argument that it is because ICE holes... Um, honoring ICE detainer requests significantly extends jail stays, and it also cost the county $3 million this past year. So that is directly related to other questions around the fiscal spending and budgets um, that you guys are talking about today. And just as a reminder, it seemed like in 2009 there was an ordinance that was passed by the county saying that local police will not be collaborating with ICE or checking immigration status. And the ICE host today seems to be a violation of that ordinance that was passed back then three, four years ago. And we are here to remind the county that there was a dedication and commitment to making sure there's no exchange of immigration status information to the federal government. And a few, a few months ago, we came here and we received a letter from a few council members saying that they had contacted Dal Constantine to also request that ICE hold detainers be lifted. And I just want to say that those were three people. It was um, Larry Phillips, Larry Gossett, and Julia 
Patterson, I think is her name. But it seems like there's a lot more of you here today whom we haven't heard from. And I'm curious to know what you think Mr. Rod Dembowski, Joe McDermott, Reagan Dunn, Jane Hugh, Haig, and Julia Patterson and other people over there whom I can't see. So we are curious to know what your stances are against around ICE detainers. We have heard your silence. Um, one other thing that I would like to point out is in Berkeley recently they did pass a uh, um, they wanted to lift the ice holes, and not just for certain crimes or people with certain convictions, but for everybody, lifting ice holes for everyone. And we want you to consider that rather than just looking at Clark County's um, uh, ice hole policy. That's all I have to say. Thank you. I don't have anyone else on, on the sign-up sheet today, so I'm going to close the public hearing. And Councilmember Haig, Councilmember Haig. I wondered if you consider putting these items before us there. Thank the you, Madam Chair. Consent agenda items. I would be happy to do that. 